Hello, uh, it's Paul Beckwith again, and um, I'm continuing on the theme of my previous video where I'm talking about the effect of the loss of Arctic sea ice, and I'll get to the loss of Arctic uh, snow cover over land, and how that changes the albedo or reflectivity in the Arctic, and what we can expect when there's, there's uh, zero sea ice in the Arctic. So um, I'll just continue where I left off on the previous um, video. So here we have um, the, uh, so basically what I was showing here is the sea ice. On the left is the, this is the sea ice extent, averaged over five years, 20, 2007 to 2011. And this is how the albedo changes. And of course, or, or, or how, what, what the absolute albedo is. So over 50% 50, 50 reflectivity where the ice is. And of course, as you get to the edges, the reflectivity or albedo decreases till you have the ocean here. Um, and if you take the sea ice um, average between 2007 to 2011 and subtract the 2000 to 2004 average, you can see the sea ice is lots of sea ice loss here a little bit gained here as there's more export out the Pram Strait. And then you can look at the, so this is from the microwave data. And if you go to the radiation data, you can look at the albedo um, and you can see the loss of albedo, you know, uh, up to 30% loss in the regions where there used to be sea ice and now there's open water. And this is the clear sky, meaning in, meaning lack of uh, lack of clouds. Now, if you go to the, so this is in the paper. Um, I'll just uh, remind you what it is. It's the observational determination of albedo decrease caused by vanishing Arctic sea ice by Pistone, Eisenman, and Ramanathan. And you can access that paper. You can find that paper. It's open source. And there's an appendix to go with this paper, supporting information, which you can also find from a link in the original paper. And what this is showing is the is this is the month of September, but you can look at it for every month of the year. So this is the ice fraction in March, the albedo in terms of the reflectivity. This is the difference. Um, the, the uh, difference in the ice, and this is the difference in the albedo, and you can see that the albedo changes carefully match the ice. So less ice, the albedo declines, right? Because the open seawater absorbs the solar radiation. And then in April, you can see the correlation here, and May, and then what happens in June is, you can see that the loss of the ice is here, but the albedo is decreasing over vast parts of the ice. So what's happening here is the surface of the ice is melting and the meltwater ponds are reducing the albedo. And you can see where the melt is most significant in these regions here, okay? Um, and then in July, there's a lot more um, melting on the surface of the ice, a lot more melt ponds and huge drops in the albedo. And then in August, the same, in August, there's a bit less. So July, you know, peak of the melting. August, there's a bit less melting. Some of the melt ponds are getting more established here in this region, but other ones are, um, are, are freezing. And then of course, when we go into September, which is shown here, um, there's, uh, there's the, the, this is where the ice is lost. So the ice is reaching its minimum extent and there's, there's nowhere near as many melt ponds, um, on the ice. So the albedo drop isn't occurring too much in the center regions where, where the ice is located. So that's, uh, quite, quite clear and significant. If we go to the next diagram, this is in the Eastern Pacific region. And what you can see is this is a region uh, where the sea ice does go to, to, to uh, you know, it, it varies, okay, uh, almost vanishes. This is the sea ice cover percent, 20% to 100%, and this is the clear sky planetary albedo. So more sea ice, you know, as sea ice increases, the cover increases, the albedo increases. You know, 25% roughly down here, up to uh, about 60%. And these dots correspond to each of the months. 
Okay, and if we go back to the, if we go to the supplementary paper uh, um, attachment or, or the supplementary file to this paper, you can see the Arctic's divided into six regions. So, so we have the European region, we have West Asia, West Pacific, East Pacific, um, North America, and Atlantic Ocean regions. So each of these are different colors. And then you can actually look at the uh, the planetary albedo in that, you know, divided up in the different regions and across the whole Arctic is black and the different regions is here. Um, you can also look at the sea ice cover percent and the albedo here in uh, smoothed uh, versions, okay, um, it, within the Arctic. So you can see that as sea ice cover increases, the planetary albedo increases, but in, you know, depending on the region, you don't, um, you don't have complete loss of ice. Okay, this is the seasonal cycle of ice albedo, you know, in the different regions. Okay, so the albedo drops off here. There's almost no ice. This is the Atlantic Ocean side. This is the North America side. So you can look at each different color corresponding to the different regions of the Arctic and the overall Arctic here. And if we go back to the paper, um, this is the central Arctic region, for example. So this is the albedo percentage for the month of the year. And this is the, you can see it actually dropping from about 80% in the central Arctic, going down to about, uh, you know, you know, 55% or so. Um, this is uh, June, July, August. So July, August, the lowest, and then it starts to increase as there's less melt ponds and so on. Um, so this is uh, from the series uh, satellite, and these are some uh, surface albedo measurements from the surface heat budget of the Arctic, a project called the Sheba Project. Okay, um, if we look at the now, we can actually, now there's something we need to distinguish between the uh, clear sky albedo, the all sky albedo, and the overcast albedo to the cloud fraction FC. So FC, if FC is 40%, there's 40% clouds, 60% open sky. So the all sky albedo is calculated by, it's the, it's the clear sky albedo times one minus FC, which is a fraction of sky that's clear, plus the cloudy albedo, the albedo when you're completely socked in with clouds, times the fraction of the sky that is clouds. Okay, um, so that's sort of the average albedo over the whole region accounting for clouds and surface albedo. So what we can see here is the clear sky albedo in blue over the years, starting when the, we had decent microwave data on sea ice extent. And you can see it's a blue line, how there's fluctuations. And then this is the total sky albedo. It's a little bit less because of the uh, clouds. Okay, and now we can compare, we can put the total sky albedo on this curve, but we instead we plot the sea ice percentage Okay, which is the black line, how the sea ice is decreasing, the extent. And we can look at the temperature increase over that region is the red curve. So we go up to about 2.5 degrees Celsius. We go, you know, this point here is about minus 0.5. So we have about a three degrees Celsius temperature increase, you know, over this time period. And that corresponds to the, in, the loss of sea ice causing increased absorption, you know, darkening Arctic, causing the, the heating. And the cloud fraction isn't changing too much, okay? It's, it's, it's lower, so the cloud fraction here, you know, it isn't changing too much. There's not a lot of change in, in the number of clouds as there's more and more open water. That's what this is, is showing. Okay, so that's the key thing from that paper. Um, there's other stats in here. Um, this is the northern hemisphere top of atmosphere forcing in watts per square meter. And you can see what you get here in the whole northern hemisphere, 1.6, 1.7 um, watts per square meter. The Flannery, a previous study, showed it being about 
you know, a third of what it actually is. So the, the effect of melting sea ice is much, much larger than, than people previously thought. Okay, um, so is there anything more recent than this? So I did a search here, uh, Pistone Arctic Search. So I went to Google Scholar, Googled Google Scholar, then did a search Pistone Arctic Sea Ice and looked at the papers and I came across with this, which is the results of a more recent paper. So it's by the same people, radiative impacts of further Arctic sea ice melt using past observations to inform future climate impacts. So they talked about the study in 2014, which I discussed in detail, and they estimated that the radiative forcing due to albedo changes over the 30 years of the satellite data record, so from 79 to 2011, was a decrease in all sky albedo of 4%. That's absolute decrease. So 52% reflectivity down to 48%. So that's the number that I've often talked about. This causes an estimated increase in solar heating of 6.4 watts per meter squared. That's between 79 and 2011 in the Arctic. Or if you average it over the globe, taking the surface area of the Arctic divided by the surface area of the globe, you get 0.21 watts per square meter averaging over the globe. And this is a big number. It's about a quarter as large as the forcing due to the change in CO2 uh, rise in the same period. Okay, now in this paper, in this more recent paper, they update and expand on the work, again using the series shortwave observation and look using the microwave data on the sea ice, and they estimate that the annually average Arctic Ocean planetary albedo under, if when we have a blue ocean event and the Arctic Ocean is ice free, if it was cloud free also, the albedo would be 14% over the Arctic region. This is 25% uh, lower in absolute terms in the Arctic Ocean cloud-free albedo in 1979. So in other words, if we look, go to 1979 and we take the condition where there's no clouds over the ice, then the albedo is 25 plus 14 or 39% reflectivity. So with the ice over the Arctic region in 1979, 40% of the, um, well, 39%, almost 40% of the incoming light was reflected back into space. Now, with no ice in the Arctic Ocean, a blue ocean event situation, without clouds, the, out, the reflectivity would be only 14%, or an absolute drop, absolute terms drop, you know, from 39% down to 14%. This is gonna cause enormous warming of the Arctic when there's no sea ice. And of course, the longer the duration of no sea ice, the, the, the greater the warming would be. Now, the question of all sky conditions. So all sky conditions includes the effects of clouds. It increases, it introduces a new level of complexity. So they looked at different cloud scenarios and the impact on albedo in this paper, and they found that the forcing was not uniformly distributed throughout the year. Okay, so they looked at it by each month and they looked at it in terms of, you know, when the, you know, of course in the winter there's no sun, so it doesn't have an effect. But in the summer, when the sun is out and bright and, sh and, and, and shining brightly over the Arctic and we've got 24 hours of sunlight in the Arctic, then that, you know, has, has a big effect. So in order to look at all these details, you need to really go to the paper. So I went to look for the paper and unfortunately, it's, uh, I, I couldn't access it, but th th this is basically the results. And I will access it and uh, do this in a subsequent video, but I wanted to show a couple things. First of all, the changes, th this paper can be accessed. Arctic climate changes in sea ice extent outweigh changes in snow cover by Letterly, Key, and Lou. Okay, this clearly shows the images in this, and I'll just show you know, go to some of the details here or, or some of the conclusions. You know, this is the albedo over the ocean, you know, uh, April, May, June. So, so um, sorry, this is solar radiation absorbed. So the, there's huge, the albedo is darkening. There's huge radiation absorbed over the ocean in the summer months. Um, and the effect of the snow cover loss on land is much lower than the effect of the loss of 
Arctic sea ice. So I think I'll end here and I'll have to discuss the more recent paper in great detail. Thanks for listening.